Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, police are looking for several suspects following a shooting on the city's west side. Details just ahead. The highly contagious UK variant is now the dominant strain of COVID in the US. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. What you need to know coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are actually about 66 degrees right now. It got pretty warm yesterday. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect today. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday, April 8th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Did you get outside yesterday? Not much. Not yet. The allergens are killing me right now. Oh, no, mm -hmm. that's right. You? Uh, in and out, but yeah, it got hot. It did get yes. very warm yesterday. This morning, looks like we either have a ton of oak pollen in the air or more likely fog. Mike Osterhage is here to clear that up for us. As quickly, good morning, everybody. As quickly as the humidity dropped off yesterday, uh -huh. about three, four o'clock. And, and it all, really dropped. It dropped and temperatures shot up. Now the opposite is happening just as we speak. I walked out the door this morning. It's like, oh, it feels nice out here, kind of refreshing. And this humidity, you can watch it actually come on in with the, the fog. And we're starting to see a whole lot of fog. And it's getting a little uh, kind of murky looking, looking off to the east there over by the airport. Visibility, which was fine for a while, is now dropped to three quarters of a mile in New Braunfels, just over a mile Randolph, mile and three quarters Stinson, Pleasant and a lot of fog, Port SA. This will continue to work its way off to the uh, west. And again, just maybe a half an hour ago, the only fog was down here along the coastal plain. So as the humidity gets pumped back on in here, we are seeing obviously some of this fog. Now it's going to do an about face and kind of come back. I don't think as much drop as much as what it did yesterday. We're not going to see dew points up into the 60s later on this afternoon. We will see it this morning, but uh, it'll drop down enough to let temperatures go up there. But uh, right now, look at that. The difference in temperature 66 at the airport, 46 in comfort. I had thought we were going to be dropping down to the low 60s this morning here in town. That may be. Uh, we may drop another couple of degrees, but all that humidity coming back on in here won't let things drop down. Uh, Mark was talking about suffering from the allergens. Oak yesterday, they call it 19,000. Let's just round up very high, the highest reading so far this season and throughout the rest of the morning. Uh, it depends on where you are. Going for low 60s here in town, still 40s in the hill country, and the humidity is going to continue to come back on in here. Fog, and with that, maybe even some mist. Saw a little bit of mist around the area yesterday in the morning hours, and so that's going to make the roads kind of damp. And then mostly Sunday, we'll see lower humidity. It'll drop back down. Wind's going to shift around to the southwest. It's going to put us up to 93. By the way, we did hit 94 yesterday. Even hotter tomorrow. What's in store for the weekend? Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and boy, it's getting soupy out there on the east side. Yeah, especially uh, you, right there, Mike, you mentioned the east side. Good morning to you. Good morning to everyone. This is a 35 uh, at Space Center, kind of where uh, 35 and 410 come together in uh, south of Ritterman Road this morning. Uh, and let's take a look at the uh, wall here so you can kind of see traffic is uh, flowing uh, well here this morning, probably a little slower than it would ordinarily because of the fog you see in uh, this area. Uh, this is our road weather tool, gives you the look at the fog and things of that nature. And down here on 1604 37, you see that's where it's showing up. But as Mike mentioned and you just saw, it's kind of farther up. So we'll see this catch up throughout the morning. Also, this morning we have a serious uh, crash here. This is a WW White Road at South Cross Boulevard. Understand there are some injuries involved uh, with this. Uh, the crews have been out here for a little bit. So if you travel in this area, WW White Road at South Cross Boulevard, that is something to watch out for this morning. B drive safely out there. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, a teenage boy has rushed to the hospital after he was shot inside his home on the city's east side. San Antonio police say this happened in the 4300 block of Spring Oak Drive near Green Valley Road and I-10. Our Stephen Cabasas is live north of downtown this morning. Stephen, what do you know about the teen's condition? Good morning, Stephanie. Well, as of this morning, we know that the teen was in critical condition when he was taken to the hospital. We also know that he was inside his home when a blue vehicle drove up and fired several shots inside. Now, this all happened just before midnight, and according to police, the teen was shot in the back of the head. Now, SAPD, along with the San Antonio Fire Department and EMS, were all on the scene. As of right now, no motive has been released, and investigators are still searching for that blue vehicle. Now, they also tell us that this is the second shooting 
shooting to happen inside this home in less than a week. But right now, it's still not clear if these two shootings are connected. For now, reporting live north of downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Also new this morning, San Antonio police say two or three men are on the run following a shooting on the west side that sent one victim to the hospital. It happened just before 10 p.m. in the 8600 block of Waters Edge. That's just west of Highway 16. Police say a man in his 20s was involved in some sort of fight with the other men near an apartment complex. During the incident, officers say the man was hit once in the chest and taken to the hospital. Police say he was responsive but is still in critical condition. Suspects got away to vehicle. If caught, police say they could face aggravated assault charges. The CDC says the highly contagious and possibly more deadly UK variant is now the most widespread source of new COVID infections in the U.S. The rise in cases of the variant comes as vaccinations continue to ramp up nationwide. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest this morning from Washington. <laughs> New concerns this morning about that highly contagious UK variant, which the CDC now says is the most dominant strain of COVID in the US. Health experts fear it's helping fuel a fourth surge of the virus. If you add on the fact that we have loosening restrictions, more people traveling, young people spreading it, and even more contagious variant, that is a setup for more outbreaks. COVID hospitalizations are on the rise in at least 16 states. In Michigan, cases nearly tripling in the last three weeks. CDC teams now on the ground there, hospitals overwhelmed once again. Nearly half of the nation's new COVID cases are in just five states. Many of the patients, younger people who have yet to be vaccinated. Hospitals are seeing more and more younger adults, those in their 30s and 40s, admitted with severe disease. At one Wisconsin daycare, at least 16 children under the age of six tested positive for the UK variant this week, along with more than a dozen daycare workers and family members. I think we we're kind of all stunned by the news. Health experts say vaccines are still effective against the variant, making the race to vaccinate even more urgent. 38 states have now opened vaccine eligibility to anyone over age 16. And with the pace of vaccinations ramping up, the director of the CDC telling ABC's Dr. Jen Ashton she's hopeful kids will be back in school this fall. I really hope a decreased number of cases that we should anticipate come September 2021 that schools should be full-fledged in person and all of our children back in the classroom. A new survey from the Department of Education found 46 percent of public school students are being offered full-time in-person learning, but the vast majority are still at home doing virtual schooling for at least part of the week. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Now to the latest on the coronavirus here at home. 290 new cases have been confirmed along with eight new deaths. There's another slight increase in our hospitals. 195 patients are being treated. 84 are in ICU. 28 are on ventilators. And time now is 438 and we're at about 66 degrees right now. Still ahead, the latest on a massive fire in the Houston area that sparked shelter in place orders. And the San Antonio Spurs kicked off their five game road trip last night against the Denver Nuggets. Highlights just ahead. And outside with live cam, the weather changing as we speak. The fog filtering in. Can't see anything with this live cam on your early Thursday morning. We're just getting started here on GMSA. Four forty one. Welcome back. President Biden set to unveil a series of executive actions aimed at addressing gun violence today. This will be a first major action on gun control since he took office. Biden has faced increasing pressure to act on gun control after recent mass shootings across the U.S. The actions are expected to include tighter regulations requiring buyers of homemade ghost guns to undergo background checks. The president will also call for investments in community violence intervention programs. U.S. Customs and Border Protection is seeing a rapid increase in counterfeit protective mask seizures. A spokesperson says the Border Patrol has seized more than 34 million counterfeit masks since the start of the pandemic a year ago. But about 20 million of those masks were seized so far this year. Border Patrol says most of the masks are modeled to resemble N95 or KN95 masks, but don't offer the same level of protection because they might be missing some components. The agency says if consumers don't know protective products are ineffective, it could give them a false sense of security and lead to further transmission. 
In Houston, hazmat crews and firefighters spent most of last night fighting a massive blaze at an industrial facility in the Channel View area. The two alarm fire broke out around 4 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Officials say the fire was extinguished around 7 p.m. and smoke from the fire was so thick it was visible on Houston's Doppler weather radar. The business is known as KSOLV and according to its Facebook page, it offers gas and chemical distribution services. All employees have been located and no injuries have been reported. Now fire crews are monitoring the facility to make sure nothing reignites. Our Spurs in Denver last night to tip off a five game road trip for the Silver and Black and this first game on the road did not go so well. Spurs led after one quarter, but the Nuggets surged and never looked bad. Being the Spurs 106-96. Nuggets have now won seven in a row. During the game, Denver head coach Michael Malone got two technicals and was ejected with about five minutes left in the first half for yelling at refs. Meanwhile, Derek White and DeJounte Murray scored 18 points each for the struggling Spurs. Uh, San Antonio head coach Greg Popovich said the loss is a result of, quote, poor play by too many people, end quote. Spurs and Nuggets play again tomorrow night in Denver. Tip-off set for 8 o'clock. All right. They'll rest. Go Spurs go. <laughs> Time now, 443 and about 67 degrees right now. Up next, a first look at why the LAPD is facing new questions after the release of body camera videos showing a, 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 an arrest. And welcome back. It's 446. The Los Angeles Police Department is facing new questions after the release of body camera video showing a controversial arrest. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, newly released body camera footage showing part of a disturbing incident from May of 2019 involving two Los Angeles police officers and a 42-year-old black man, Anton Austin, appearing to be caught off guard when officers approached him outside his home. Got a call. We got a call. Okay, man. I don't know who I'm looking for yet. Come on. Step, 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 step. Turn around, man. What was your reaction once you went back and actually saw it all play out and you got to actually hear the officers in the car before they got out? In your mind, you want to say to yourself, oh, you know, the first thing I'll just have because I'm black and then you won't want to be that petty. You don't want to be that small. Coming up at 7 a.m., Austin is speaking out alongside his girlfriend about the lawsuit he's filed alleging racial profiling and civil rights violations. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. And let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. A lot of fog building up right now. It's 447. Good morning, Samuel. Uh, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Uh, definitely building up on the eastern part of the area and southern uh, parts of the area. This is 35 at Ben Zingelman. You see traffic uh, is uh, flowing this morning, but it does appear that uh, not too many issues we're seeing with in terms of at this location at the moment this morning. Uh, so looking at uh, the maps here, you can see the orange color uh, is a fog and clearly you see it's on 35 and 410 and everything, but uh, we expect this sort of color to move over. So if you're pretty much east of uh, downtown, uh, expect to see some uh, fog in your commute this morning. Uh, and Mike's gonna obviously gonna talk more about that in just a second. Uh, but we do still also have a crash. This is uh, WW w. White Road at South Cross Boulevard. Uh, crews have been out here uh, for a little more than an hour or so. We do understand there are some injuries uh, with this one. Uh, and you can see there's a bit of a slowdown heading southbound on WW w. White Road this morning. So just something uh, to watch out for and be careful with the fogs and make sure the fog and make sure to use your low beams, guys. Mike, I was shocked how much the weather changed yesterday. I mean, it was bone dry going into last night and the overnight hours. Yeah, that front, or excuse me, the dry line, if you will, moved mm -hmm. through just about right on schedule. And it's funny because I was just thinking almost exactly 12 hours later, because that was between about 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. yesterday, and it's been between about 3 and 4 o'clock this morning that all of a sudden the opposite has happened. Now the dry line's moving back out to the west. First of all, great picture. I love that from a couple of days ago, the red, white, and blue with the clouds there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, this looks like uh, the trans guide 
cameras that Sam was just showing, you can see the fog is continuing to work its way from east to west toward the uh, toward the camera. Visibility officially at the airport is still 10 miles, but Port SA has really dropped down stints and ran everybody to the east of uh, 281, and that will continue. Even Bernie's got a little bit. Bernie stage a little bit of fog out there, and very very thick fog down here along the coastal plain. There is a dense fog advisory down to the southeast uh, issued by the Corpus Christi Weather Service office. Does include B and Live Oak counties, uh, Victoria County as well up until nine o'clock. So watch out for that. So dew point temperatures, like I said yesterday, they dropped down, walked out this morning. It was really comfortable, and now all that is changing. And even by nine o'clock this morning, this computer model has all the humidity. It's just doing a complete about face back up into the mid 60s, very humid, and that's going to be invading the hill country as well. And that's going to be the situation through about early afternoon. Then the dry line is going to start to work its way back through the area. Now, I don't think it's going to be quite the dramatic drop in the humidity will still get very hot. I think we stay maybe a degree or two below yesterday because dry air heats up much, much more quickly than what moist air does. And so again, that's why temperatures all of a sudden just skyrocketed in the afternoon yesterday, but it's still going to be hot still up into the 90s. Humidity, though, is really going to be pumping back on in here tomorrow morning and it'll be sticking around through a good chunk of the day. And then the dry line comes back on through here. Now tomorrow when that dry line moves through, there's going to be the chance for a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, but I think most of those will be off to the east. We'll see more sunshine later on today. Clouds come back in tomorrow. A couple little sprinkly showers, perhaps off to the east, and then we go through the same situation again. Now, notice how this computer model does not indicate any rain anywhere in our area. Uh, there will be somewhat of a front trying to move through maybe overnight Friday. I'm not really buying into this yet. It depends on which computer model. Some have everything out of here by mid afternoon tomorrow. Others linger into uh, tomorrow night. One thing to point out, though, Storm Prediction Center does have actually they've kind of upped the chance for severe weather well up there to the north up around, say, Waco. And this is not even in our viewing area as far as the threat for any strong thunderstorms. Some of those could kind of show up in some of our eastern counties. That would be tomorrow. But it's uh, it's one of the situations we've been talking about where the atmosphere is really starting. It's like the pressure's building, but it's a really tight lid on things. You poke a hole in that, it's going to really come out quickly. And that's why some of those storms could easily go severe if indeed they do pop up. But the chance of them popping up are not that great, especially in our area. That's tomorrow. Today, 78, partly cloudy skies at noon. So we'll still keep humidity around this morning. Then it's going to be dropping off somewhat. Not quite as much as yesterday, but still, it'll be somewhat comfortable. A little bit lower humidity. And it's going to be another hot one up to 93 degrees. Yesterday was 15 degrees above normal. Today, 14 above normal. Uh, tomorrow, we start off mid 60s again, very warm and humid. The record tomorrow is 98. We're going to be really close to it. Uh, we'll have a couple of stray showers, thunderstorms, mainly well off to the east. And then not a bad weekend, mid 80s. And then we'll finally be dropping down next week. And keep your fingers crossed for some rain next week. Yeah, we hope we get that rain. Yeah, if you walk out the door right now and it's comfortable where you are, just wait. It's probably going to change <laughs> when you get out of the car then. <laughs> but don't walk out the door yet because we need you right here. Yeah, yeah. that's Okay, true. so we yeah, need we the won't. whole family together. 453 on your Thursday morning. Them. R right. <laughs> and still ahead, details on the retirement of famed zookeeper Jack Hanna following a diagnosis of dementia. Well, such a sad story. Pick three numbers. Uh, 922 Fireball 9. Daily 4 6 6 6 2 Fireball 9. Cash 5, 3, 5, 19, 24, 30. Lotto, Texas, 2, 5, 14, 19, 29, 43. And your Powerball numbers, 27, 35, 39, 51, 66, Powerball 16, Powerplay 5. Good luck. A famous zookeeper is retiring, plus Taylor Swift surprises her fans yet again. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. So most folks these days just call me Rebel. Katie Seagal returns to network television tonight with the new drama Rebel. The veteran actress plays the title character who's inspired by the life of Aaron Brockovich. Rebel is a legal advocate fighting for the working class. And Seagal tells us oh, it's a great. role women don't often come across when they get to a certain age in Hollywood. We're showing... Um, I don't like to say older. I, I'll say older women are still very viable in many, many ways. And so you're seeing sort of a kick kind of still hot, still sexy. I feel really happy that ABC has been so supportive of that. 
Rebel debuts tonight on ABC. Hi, everybody. I'm Jack Hanna. Coming to you from my base camp here at the Columbus Zoo. Famed zookeeper and late-night talk show guest Jack Hanna is retiring from public life. His family says he's been diagnosed with dementia, which they believe has progressed rather quickly in the past few months into Alzheimer's disease. But they say Hanna still has a sense of humor. And yes, he's still wearing his khakis at home. Taylor Swift has again cracked open her musical vault for a surprise release. The singer dropped Mr. Perfectly Fine, a song she wrote back in 2008 that will appear as one of the never-before-released From the Vault tracks on her upcoming re-recorded version of Fearless, which is out tomorrow. And happy birthday, Madam President. House of Cards star Robin Wright is 55 today, while Oscar winner Patricia Arquette is 53. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And happy birthday to everybody celebrating today. Okay. And time now is 4.58 and about 67 degrees right now. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, we have a preview of President Joe Biden's expected first major action addressing gun control. Plus, Samsung is showing off its new line of cheaper smartphones, some of which still have the latest 5G technology. We'll get a preview ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, Texas Rangers set to begin their investigation into complaints of abuse of migrant children being housed at Freeman Coliseum. Plus, President Biden set to unveil a series of executive actions aimed at addressing gun violence later today. Well, it was super dry overnight, and now all of a sudden fog has swept into the area. We'll get an update from Mike Osterhage as we try to appear at Loop 410 out there by the airport. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Thursday morning. It's April 8th. Thanks for joining us. And when I drove in, I didn't have to deal with the fog, but now it's there all over the place. Very rapidly yeah. developed, Mike Osterhage. Will it get better or worse before it gets better? Uh, worse because uh, it has gotten a lot thicker around here. Weather Service just issued dense fog advisory. This is a, a complete, the complete opposite of what happened yesterday afternoon. Yesterday we were very, very hot. It was still really humid. The dry line moved through. Humidity dropped off very quickly and that dry line is now doing an about face and, and you know put the put the sheer gear shift in reverse and is now moving back on through here. So we're at 65 right now. The dew point is now up to 62. It was down in the, the 40s overnight most of uh, the evening. And as that humidity comes back on in here, that's what's helping out with some of that fog. Temperatures, we're, it's going to be another hot one today. We'll still be about 14, 15 degrees above normal. The air will dry out. I don't know if it's going to dry out quite as much as yesterday, but it'll be dry enough to help those temperatures or allow those temperatures to to get up very, very warm. The aquifer yesterday dropped down seven tenths of a foot and the allergens. Wow, ton of oh, call it 19,000. Just round up. It is very, very high. Dense fog advisory was just we had one earlier from uh, Corpus Christi Weather Service Office. This graphic, I apologize, has not updated as of yet, but uh, fog advisory was just issued. Uh, most all of the area going as far north as Blanco. Uh, in toward Frio, Gonzales, Carnes, most all of the area, including Bear County, and this is up until 9 o'clock this morning. So again, this just happened, so it takes a second for all this to update, but this would include much, much more of our viewing area at up until 9 o'clock this morning. Now, as far as do, or excuse me, uh, visibility, it was 10 miles, now it's down to 2 miles out there at the airport. Third of a mile, Randolph, Port Jose has dropped to just 1 mile. Watch it around Bernie's stage, Castroville, because all this is going to continue to work its way off to the uh, west, and it's really, really thick down there to the uh, southeast as well. So this is going to be a soupy morning. It's going to be slow going. We're going to have some mist and drizzle around the area as well. So the humidity, humidity, if it has not returned, is going to be returning where you are. Fog and mist around here, and then it's going to drop off. It's going to be hot again. We're going to make it up into the uh, low 90s again today. Hotter tomorrow. We're looking at uh, mid and upper 90s, even some triple digits. There's going to be a stray shower or storm off to the east. Very, very few and far between, uh, maybe not even our viewing area. Just a mention of that. If you're going further up to the northeast or heading up I-35, way up in toward Waco, could have some strong thunderstorms tomorrow, but not around here. And then over the weekend, call it mid 80s, um, still hot, but a little more pleasant. And then we do have a chance for some rain coming in here next week. All those details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Boy, just looking at some of those Transguide cameras. Yeah, definitely. We're seeing it on more of the Transguide cameras. Mike, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. This is at 37 
at uh, Loop 410 on the southeast side. You can see uh, fog definitely there uh, in this area as we head over here to uh, the wall. So you can see you can kind of see the traffic moving there. So as Mike was just kind of alluding to, definitely plan for some extra time this morning, uh, particularly in the next uh, a few hours uh, as uh, the fog continues to uh, develop in the area. This is our road weather tool. Uh, it's kind of there is a bit of a lag here, so we do probably expect to see a lot more orange on the map. Orange equals fog on this map. We do have a crash this morning. This is a uh, WW White Road at South Cross Boulevard crew still on the scene here. We understand there were some injuries this morning, uh, so just take it easy and be careful uh, out there this morning, uh, particularly with the foggy conditions. Here's a look at some travel times. 26 minutes coming into downtown San Antonio from New Braunfels, 25 minutes uh, from Bernie. As Mike was mentioning, uh, less fog at the moment to the west, but that will change. But our travel times from the east, including from Seguin on I-10, 30 minutes still look fairly normal right now. We'll have another update coming up. Mark Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Governor Greg Abbott is now calling on the federal government to close the facility housing migrant children at the Freeman Coliseum after complaints of abuse and understaffing were received. Abbott says the complaints are credible and were made to the Texas Health and Human Services Commission and Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Last night, he declined to provide details about the tipster, but said it was from at least one or more person who had been inside that facility. The allegations include sexual assault, understaffing, people not being fed enough food, and COVID-positive children not being isolated from others. The governor says Texas Rangers are now investigating the cases. Bear County Precinct 1 Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores, who has visited the facility, often says that the allegations are political in nature and amount to, quote, fake news. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg released a statement on this saying, quote, these allegations about the federal operation are disturbing, if true, and the thorough investigation is warranted. And following Abbott's announcement, a White House regional spokesperson released the following statement following the allegations. The Biden administration takes the safety and well-being of children in its care very seriously. Currently, we see no basis for Governor Abbott's call to shut down the San Antonio Freeman Coliseum as an intake site. However, his claims will be looked into and investigated by the Department of Health and Human Services. End quote. You can read more about this developing story right now on KSET.com. Other local news and investigators set to leave the Bear County District Attorney's Office following his arrest. 31-year-old Ricardo Bermudez Jr. was arrested by SAPD early Friday morning on suspicion of driving while intoxicated just north of downtown. Police say he failed a field sobriety test and repeatedly asked officers if they could just take him home. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says Bermudez, who has been with the DA's office for four years, was put on leave and has now decided to resign. Today, President unveil, uh, Biden is unveiling a series of executive actions aimed at limiting gun violence. Those actions include putting new firearm restrictions and initiatives in place as gun safety legislation remains stalled. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. After three mass shootings in three weeks, President Biden this morning following through with his promise to take on gun violence. I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps that will save the lives in the future. The president is expected to announce six executive orders on guns today. They include asking the Justice Department to crack down on so-called ghost guns, firearms assembled with a 3D printer from parts purchased online. The Internet has plans to 3D print any kind of weapon anybody wants with printers that make that incredibly easy for someone to do in only a few hours in their garage or in their living room. The president will also call for investments in community violence intervention programs, a new annual report on firearms trafficking, which hasn't been compiled since 2000. And he'll encourage states to adopt red flag laws, which allow police or family members to petition courts to temporarily remove guns from people in crisis. There'll be no legislative proposal from Biden today. But Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has vowed to take action overhauling gun laws, including trying to pass stricter background checks. This time is going to be different. A Democratic majority in the Senate is going to act. I have committed to put legislation to expand background checks on the floor of the Senate. But Republican leaders say the focus should be on mental health. The focus ought to be on identifying uh, people in advance who have the capacity uh, and the interest in carrying out these atrocious uh, attacks.
And gun control advocates and some Democrats pushing for more regulations will join President Biden. Faith Abube, ABC News, New York. And San Antonio voters will have a hand in deciding the future of San Antonio's police department. Proposition B will go up for a vote in the May election, and you can hear from the different sides of the issue tonight. The Bear Facts Case at San Antonio Report Partnership will host a live stream debate on the proposition between the San Antonio Police Union, FIX SAPD. The city attorney will also be there. Our Steve Spreester will be moderating the debate. You can watch the live stream on KSET.com tonight at 7 p.m. But right now it's 10 minutes past 5 in the morning. We're about 66 degrees. And still ahead, a first look at Samsung's latest series of more inexpensive smartphones. Plus a look back at the first civil government in Texas started right here in San Antonio and how it helped shape Texas politics. And taking a look outside with live cam, your screen says 66 degrees. It's actually 65 degrees. And if you're headed out, you may see this, a lot of fog. So be careful out there. We'll be right back. Did you know the first civil government or city council in Texas was started right here in San Antonio? In this next Tejano Moment story, our Eric Ednadez tells us who created that city council and how it helped shape Texas politics. In 1731, families from the Canary Islands began to arrive into San Antonio. By 1733, they, along with the soldier settlers already living in the area, created the first city council. The Canary Islanders first take uh, their position as Hidalgos, of course, but as the first mayor of San Antonio, the first Rijadores, the first city councilman and, and justices and so forth. Not only did this city council govern the residents in San Antonio, but also the outlying ranches. And as the city council evolves, they started establishing laws, developing infrastructure, applying taxes and hiring law enforcement to patrol the town. It gave structure. It gave us law and order. It gave us some social continuity, uh, respect for government, uh, the fundamental things that we celebrate today. These first Tejano City Councils will continue until 1842. The last mayor would be Colonel Juan Seguin, and it wouldn't be until 1981 that San Antonio had another Tejano mayor, which was Henry Cisneros. For more on Tejano history, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Hey, staff. Mm -hmm. It's 515. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And about 66 degrees. Thanks, yeah. Steph. No problem. Still ahead, we'll check out Samsung's newest line of smartphones meant to be for customers on a tight budget. Your mission, stand up to moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis and take it on with Rinvoke. Rinvoke, a once daily pill, can dramatically improve symptoms. Rinvoke helps tame pain, stiffness, swelling. And for some, Rinvoke can even significantly reduce RA fatigue. That's Rinvoke relief. With RA, your overactive immune system attacks your joints. Rinvoke regulates it to help stop the attack. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious infections and blood clots, sometimes fatal, have occurred, as have certain cancers, including lymphoma, and tears in the stomach or intestines, and changes in lab results. Your doctor should monitor your blood work. Tell your doctor about any infections, and if you are or may become pregnant while taking Rinvoke. Take on RA. Talk to your rheumatologist about Rinvoke Relief. Rinvoke, make it your mission. If you can't afford your medicine, Abdi may be able to help. In today's Tech Byte, Samsung's first affordable 5G phone. The company is launching three new 5G phones as part of the Galaxy A series that includes the A32 phoner, which runs under $300, one of the most inexpensive on the U.S. market. And UPS is buying a fleet of electric aircraft to speed up delivery service, and they fly like a plane but land and take off vertically like a helicopter, so no runway is needed. Uh, the aircraft produce zero emissions and can handle several routes on a single charge, and they're set to arrive in 20 2024. And finally, hey Spotify, that's all you need to say to launch a new voice feature on the Spotify app. And once it's enabled, you can ask to hear certain artists, albums, song, or playlist by name. Your commands are confirmed by either a male or female voice. Those are your Tech Bytes. I'm Faith Abube. Have a great day. And the fog is out there, so let's go ahead and check to see if the drivers are having any problems right now. Samuel? Uh, Stephanie and Mark, yeah, there's some here and there. We'll have a looking at a view across the region. This is 35 
at uh, 410, for instance, and 35 at Laredo. Not as, as much fog. It's there, but you don't necessarily see as much. So uh, this is just something that drivers are going to have to be uh, dealing with uh, throughout the morning out there. So this is something to watch out for. 410 at Rolling Ridge. Now we're starting to see uh, more of the fog in that area as well. This is uh, our map here, and we expect to see more orange foggy driving conditions overspreading the area over uh, the, the next uh, several hours or so. So just something to, to keep in mind. Uh, seeing some of the delays improving here at uh, WW White Road at South Cross Boulevard. I uh, had a uh, crash here overnight. Uh, there were some injuries involved there, but it does look like the situation in terms of uh, driving in this area has is in quickly improving. So uh, that's some good news there. And now looking at uh, 410, which is close to that area, still looking good on a travel time 12 minutes each way between 35 and 37 guys. Thank you very much, Samuel. Mike, looks like San Francisco out there this morning. Yes. Just about, yeah, I mean, it changed dramatically in almost the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of thick fog around the area. As you can see, visibilities have uh, really dropped down since in a half mile. Two at the airport, uh, it's actually come up a little bit around Randolph and a quarter mile around uh, New Braunfels and then thicker fog down to the southeast. I have to make a correction. I misspoke earlier. The dense fog advisory is only in effect for the coastal plain out of the Corpus Christi Weather Service office. There's a, a website that we look at. We can see it's a chat website with the Weather Service, and I saw big bold letters saying Weather Service issues, and it said patchy dense fog and gave an expiration time. And with a list of counties, I had assumed that it was a dense fog advisory. It is not for most of the area except for the uh, coastal plain, but obviously there's still a lot of thick fog out there and there's also a lot of mist being reported too. So you got to watch it because the roads are definitely going to be damp. Yesterday after that dry air moved on in here, that dry line, which came in just about right on schedule mid late afternoon, obviously sooner in the hill country and then temperatures just decided to really skyrocket. We got up to 94, 95 Catula, 96 for high temperature yesterday in Hondo and we're looking at some triple digit readings down to the uh, southwest later on today. I think uh, temperatures stay at or maybe a degree or two below where we were yesterday. We will dry out this humidity. The dry line is you know doing this back and forth thing. It came through yesterday back up to the northwest this morning and then it's going to come back. But I don't think we drop with the humidity quite as much, but still obviously it's going to be hot out there mid 90s. Now we will see more sunshine later on today after this fog this morning and then tomorrow with same thing. We see clouds come back in because the humidity is going to come back in here. Then it's going to be going away throughout the afternoon. One thing to take note of notice how on this computer model there's no rain showing up off to the uh, northeast of us. That's tomorrow afternoon. This one does have a couple of sprinkly showers by late tomorrow night, early Saturday morning, which yes, is a possibility, but I think much of this is going to be out of here, if anything, by the evening hours. So again, everything's not necessarily in agreement with this. But one thing, as you can see with the uh, severe outlook, there's nothing in our area. So the majority of any uh, storms, any rain is going to be well off to the northeast of us. And this is going to be later on uh, tomorrow afternoon. It's a very volatile atmosphere tomorrow, but there's the big lid on the atmosphere, so it can't really blow up, if you will. If something does decide to form up as far as a thunderstorm, they can go uh, reach severe levels quite easily tomorrow. But again, most of that would be off to the northeast of us. 78 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and a high temperature today. Yep, another hot one. It's going to feel like, what is that, mid-June approximately? 93 for a high. A little bit lower humidity this afternoon. I don't think quite as low as yesterday. And then tomorrow we get up to 97. It is going to be breezy. A couple of those showers, thunderstorms, primarily well off to the east. And then we do drop down somewhat on the weekend, mid-80s. And then finally back down to about normal average readings by the middle of the week. And hopefully we get some rain in here next week. There are some indications of it right now. Really need it. Yeah, but just watch out for the fog and mist on the roads. Yeah, there's a lot of that out mm -hmm. there right now. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 524 on your Thursday morning. Glad you're with us. And coming up next in the morning spotlight, some big name Hollywood actresses are announcing new movies plus new wish music from Taylor Swift. Some of the biggest women in entertainment have new projects on the way. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. I'm not gonna hurt you. I wanna see where the blood's coming from. It's not my blood. My dad said, if anything happened, I should find someone I can trust. Are 
are you someone I can trust? Here's your first look at Angelina Jolie in Those Who Wish Me Dead. The Oscar winner plays a survival expert who finds herself trying to protect a young murder witness from assassins and a raging forest fire. The thriller arrives in theaters and on HBO Max May 14th. Another surprise from Taylor Swift's Vault. She originally recorded Mr. Perfectly Fine in 2008 for her Fearless album, but it didn't make the cut. Swift's re-recorded Mr. Perfectly Fine just dropped, and the full Fearless Taylor's version arrives Friday. You have the talent. Whether you have the killer instinct is the big question. The Emmas face off. Here's a look at Emma Stone and Emma Thompson in the latest trailer for Cruella, about the early days of that most fashionable of villains, Cruella de Vil. The 101 Dalmatians prequel hits theaters and Disney Plus premiere access May 28th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Yeah, I saw the full trailer in the theater when I went to see oh, The Courier yeah? with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. It looks pretty good. It, it does. I'm excited about this. On Disney. On Disney. 528 right now. And still ahead on GMSA, President Joe Biden will take his first limited action on gun control today. We're going to take a look at the first six things he plans to do. Get ready for a surge of vacations this summer. Why the COVID-19 vaccines have renewed people's urges to get the heck out of town. Plus, Samuel Adams wants to give you free beer. What? <laughs> We're going to tell you how it works coming up. Hi, good morning. It's Thursday, April 8th. Well, it wasn't quite with the snap of your fingers, but fog moved in very quickly overnight into early this morning, and Mike is standing by with the latest. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I walked out the door this morning. It was really pleasant, low humidity, comfortable, and now uh, that has all changed. Fog has definitely moved on in here, and temperatures have pretty much bottomed out. I thought we were going to make it down to the low 60s. Nope, it's not going to be the case this morning. Uh, we're holding right now at 65 degrees, the dew point, which... A couple of hours ago was in the mid 40s, which is the situation right now in the hill country, but it has come up to uh, 62 and no wind. So we've got all the good ingredients and all this moisture is getting pumped on in here for the fog and two miles visibility out there at the airport. Port of say three quarters, quarter mile Stinson, as well as in New Braunfels. Watch out around Bernie stage. It's starting to show up a little bit there in Hondo. So all this is will continue to kind of drift off to the uh, west throughout the rest of the morning and then a lot of thick fog down to the southeast. This is where the uh, dense fog advisory is in effect. It does include uh, Live Oak, B, Victoria counties up until 9 o'clock this morning with the very low visibility there. And low visibility, very high oak. Round up 19,000 on the oak, the uh, highest reading so far this year. And the updated count is going to be coming out in about a couple of hours or so. 78 at noon today. It's going to be another scorcher. That roughly is the normal average high temperature, mid upper 70s. So we're going to be uh, 14, 15 degrees above normal. Yesterday we hit 94 and the humidity will be drying out a little bit today. I don't think as much as what it did yesterday but it still is not going to be oppressively humid by any stretch. Now we'll go through the same cycle again tomorrow, then we'll cool down for the weekend. Relatively speaking, cool down for the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Okay, fog mist. Any problems out there? Uh, no real uh, problems out there at the moment, Mike. Uh, this is a trans sky to looking throughout the region. Uh, there are some uh, that are out at, at the moment, but the uh, for the most part, uh, you can see fog across many areas of the region now really uh, overspreading things. Like for instance, 35 at Space Center, we showed you this uh, earlier this morning, near 35 and 410 come together, 281 at the quarry, another place where we are seeing fog. As we anticipated, uh, this sort of uh, foggy weather indicator here is going to, in terms of driving conditions, I mean, it's going to start overspreading the area a little more. Now we're into the heart of uh, San Antonio here for and also New Braunfels and Seguin. Uh, we've been talking about the crash this morning at WW White and South Cross that had some injuries that has now cleared. Looking at travel times, 25 minutes coming in from New Braunfels on 35, 10 minutes um, from Seguin on I-10, 24 minutes uh, from Bernie on I-10 as well, 19 minutes from Castroville. So the travel times still look fairly well. Don't have uh, many crashes on the board at the moment. So we want to keep it that way, of course. So we want people to uh, keep it fairly easy, uh, use the low beams, slow down a little bit, and we'll get everyone where they need to be safely this morning. We'll have another update coming up.
Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, police say a teenager is in critical condition as a result of a drive-by shooting on the city's east side. This happened around 1130 last night in the 4300 block of Spring Oak Drive. That's near W.W. W. White Road and Interstate 10. SAPD telling us that the team was inside his home when a blue vehicle drove up and someone inside that vehicle fired several shots into the house. The team was hit in the back of the head and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Officers are still looking for those responsible. Police say this is the second shooting call in a week at this location. San Antonio police say a cyclist was hit and killed by a vehicle while riding with a group here just outside the KSAT studios last night. Officers say a woman was riding ahead of a group of cyclists around 7 p.m. and pulled over to rest right in front of Central Catholic High School. Investigators say as the group of cyclists were arriving, a black car jumped the curb and hit and killed the cyclist. The driver has been detained on suspicion of driving while intoxicated. 535 today, President Joe Biden will lay out the first part of his plan for gun control with six executive actions in the works. CNN's Brett Conway breaks down each of those with a look at what's next. I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps that will save the lives in the future. It's a commitment President Joe Biden made after the recent mass shootings in Atlanta and in Boulder. The White House says Biden will lay out six initial actions today. First, a rule tightening restrictions on so-called ghost guns, which are handmade or self-assembled firearms that don't have serial numbers. Second, a rule restricting pistol stabilizing braces, which make weapons more stable and accurate. Third, suggesting red flag legislation for states, laws that allow family or police to have the court temporarily take guns away from people who might hurt themselves or others. Fourth, money for community violence interventions. Fifth, an annual report on firearms trafficking. And sixth, nominating a gun control advocate to lead the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, David Chipman. Take a listen to what he had to say in 2019 on weapons regulations. My time as a federal law enforcement officer taught me that although all weapons can be dangerous in the wrong hands, some weapons are particularly lethal and should be more strictly regulated. From here, it's up to the Justice Department, which has between 30 and 60 days to write the rules for ghost guns and stabilizing braces and the suggested red flag laws. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Most Americans who have received stimulus checks are putting them into their savings accounts instead of spending them right away. A survey by the Federal Reserve shows households intend to set aside 42% of their stimulus payments for a rainy day fund. 34% are using the coronavirus stimulus money to pay down debt. The Fed survey estimates only about a quarter of the checks are going towards spending. About 25 million more payments are expected to have been delivered by the end of this week, including many for Social Security recipients. Carnival Cruise Line is threatening to move its ships away from the U.S. This after the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention published new guidance but did not include when cruises will be allowed to operate to U.S. waters. Carnival has canceled all cruises departing from U.S. ports through June 30th. It has 14 home ports along the east and west coast and in the Gulf of Mexico. Other cruise lines have already resumed operations by moving their ships to other parts of the world. It's now 5.30. We're around 66 degrees. And this Superman comic from 1938 originally sold for 10 cents. So we're going to tell you how much it just sold for at auction, and it's a whole lot more. A whole lot more. It's being uh, cooped by the coronavirus for more. I'm sorry, being cooped up by the coronavirus for more than a year has taken its toll. Up next, how vaccines seem to be just the booster some have needed to feel good about traveling again. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, as you can see, it's pretty foggy out there. So be careful if you have to head out on the road and we're expecting some heat today. We're going to check in with Mike later on. We're just a few weeks into spring, but a lot of people already seem to have their eyes on summer travel. They're anxious not to have a repeat of last year when the pandemic put a curb in their travel plans. As Katrina Weber reports, the vaccine has given some people a shot of confidence. Just like these planes, summer plans are no longer up in the air. Some people are ready to go. I plan to take some time off. Um, I've already been vaccinated, so 
hopefully I can get some travel in this summer. We were planning to do it last year, but we couldn't do it. So we're, we might go this year. Being cooped up by the coronavirus has taken its toll on folks. Vaccines are just the booster some have needed to feel good about traveling again. We want to go to the beach, go to Corpus. We heard it's fun there, so we're looking forward to that. Probably in the Caribbean um, or maybe, I, I don't know, um, maybe, maybe somewhere in Asia. It just feels like the floodgates open. People saying, I want to. I want to go somewhere. Alice Petrie's phones have been ringing off the hook lately at her Northwest Side Travel Agency. She says while vaccinations have increased interest in vacations, all destinations may not be ready. The Mexico beaches, but there's a lot to see in the United States also. Cruise ships from any U.S. port, she says, are not an option yet. And there are no guarantees when it comes to flying into other countries. As for flying out of San Antonio, the airport has yet to crunch the numbers for summer expectations. AAA, which keeps track of road travel trends, doesn't have any hard figures for the summer just yet either, but the early signs are pointing to people being on the move in mass out here as well. The travel bug seems to be very much alive, and it goes both ways. We're really waiting to get out our calculators and to look at what happened at spring break because just the eye test told us it was outstanding. Richard Oliver with Visit San Antonio says based on recent business at local attractions, he expects summer tourism to take flight too, with most visitors coming from within Texas. Anything is gonna be such a bonus from what we had to deal with in 2020. Uh, and it's good, but we feel very good about what's going on. He's hopeful the season will be a good shot in the arm for the local economy. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Oh, travel businesses are about to just go crazy. Yeah, a lot of people are very excited to get out, you know, out, out. At least have <laughs> something on the books, you know, yeah. planned for, for a trip somewhere. 544 on your Thursday morning. And coming up next, details on Sam Adams' newest offer for free beer money and how you can get it. And welcome back. It's 547. In your morning consumer headlines, Best Buy has unveiled a new membership program that offers benefits like free installation and unlimited tech support. The $200 annual membership fee is an answer to Amazon Prime's $120 fee that includes perks like free delivery and movies. The program called Best Buy Beta will be available in around 60 of the big box electronic stores in six states by the end of April. In addition to tech support, Best Buy Beta offers free shipping, extended return windows, and sales on exclusive electronic items. If the beta test is successful, the new program may replace Best Buy's existing membership program called Total Tech Support. Do you like that famous beer from Boston? Well, Sam Adams is giving out beer money to encourage vaccination. Starting April 12th, if you post your vaccination sticker or bandage, the company will send you $7 through the Cash App for a beer at your favorite bar. Remember to include the hashtag shot for Sam and tag it at Samuel Adams Beer on Instagram or Twitter. Then check for a direct message and, of course, make sure you have the Cash App account. It's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's really an expensive Superman comic. The Auction House Comic Connect says this item just sold for a record-breaking $3.2 million. Wow, it's the issue that first introduced Superman to readers back in 1938. Back then, this cost only uh, 10 cents. Wow, it was unearthed decades later in a stack of movie magazines in mint condition. Wow, it looks like it's in mint condition. Not bad, but over three million dollars. I'm just 10 cents. <laughs> I know. When we were talking about Tom Brady's rookie card just selling for over a million dollars the other day. Yeah, I hope people are saving their their items. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never know. 548. We're going to check on the fog and how it's affecting traffic with Samuel King. Good morning. Uh, morning, Mark and Stephanie. In some areas, it's worse than others. This is 37 and 410 on the uh, south side. You can see uh, fog is uh, pretty uh, thick in uh, this location here. So uh, this is something to be mindful of this morning. Make sure you uh, plan for plenty of uh, time and allow space between you and the other driver and use your low beams if you encounter areas with fog. Otherwise, looking across the area, we had a crash here earlier, uh, WW White and South Cross, but that has been cleared. So no crashes on the board at the moment. We hope that continues. Looking at Bender Road on northwest side between 410 and 1604, 10 minutes uh, heading northbound, nine minutes heading southbound, guys. 
Thank you, Samuel. All right. Dense fog advisory now has been issued for a good chunk of the year. Oh, that's, so, that's an update. Okay. Yeah, so it has. Yeah. yeah, the fog has definitely uh, gotten thicker, and it's going to be getting thicker and sticking around for a long time. So, uh, yeah, this picture has actually gotten foggier just in the past what uh, ten minutes, maybe fifteen minutes. So we're going to keep watching. This is a good kind of measuring stick, if you will. Castrill is down to three quarters of a mile. Two at the airport. Three quarters uh, port SA. Same thing. Um, it hasn't changed there in New Braunfels. It improved a little bit in Pleasanton. Watch it around Hondo, Bernie Stage. You're sort of next in line. This is going to continue to sort of, it's like the old movie, The Blob. It's just going to kind of ooze its way off to the west and to the northwest. And way out in the hill country, it's not bad. But then down to the southeast, you've got a lot of thick fog. So again, the dense fog advisory down here along the coastal plains issued by the uh, Corpus Christi office that's in effect until nine o'clock, but for the rest of our area, this is in effect until 10 o'clock this morning. There's a lot of mist being reported as well. So of course roads are damp and it's just enough to make things like driving on ice sometimes out there. Dew point temperature, excuse me, air temperatures right now. We are in the mid 60s and we had been cooling down quite nicely. We've actually dropped down 30 degrees from yesterday, believe it or not, when we got up into the mid 90s. And it's much, much cooler out there in parts of the hill country. Bernie stage right now at 59 degrees, but we're not gonna be cooling down really any anymore because we've got all this humidity moving on in here. And look at the difference, 62 to 42 out there in Bandera for dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. That's the air that was here in town just a couple of hours ago, and all this moisture has continued to work its way on in here and will continue to move westward. And the difference comparing to 24 hours ago, the dew point temperature change. Remember, it was very humid, dropped down in the afternoon, so we're almost back to where we were yesterday here in town, but it is 20, 25, close to 30 degrees lower the humidity. That's the year that we had yesterday afternoon. Now we will see somewhat of a drop in the humidity later on today. That dry line, which moved on through, is now going back out to the west. Is going to start to come back down to the southeast, kind of what it usually does in the summertime. We will be uh, seeing more sunshine later on today. And then the humidity comes back in again tomorrow morning. It's going to be really humid. We'll have some more fog probably, maybe some mist around the area. Then it's going to be dropping down. Now, as that uh, dry line moves on through tomorrow afternoon, and the timing of it still little iffy as of right now. Uh, there is going to be the chance for a couple of showers well off to the east and maybe even a few thunderstorms. Most of those are going to be even out of our area, but just kind of a mention of it. 78 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature gets up to 93. So like yesterday, we're going to be 14, 15 degrees above normal. Very hot, but the humidity will drop down somewhat. I don't think as much as yesterday, but it'll be more comfortable. It's not like you're going to walk outside and just start sweating because of the humidity and very hot tomorrow. 97 mid 80s over the weekend, a little more comfortable, still above average and then back down to what you would expect this time of year and hopefully some rain by the middle of the week. We do need rain over several days here. Uh, There's just... small chances as of right now, still a few days away, so don't you know, don't start making plans for it yet, but at okay. least there's a glimmer of hope. All right, I'm hoping for rain. I'm also hoping for uh, 70s, I saw there. Yes, upper 70s, week. believe it or not. Yeah, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. 78 is going to feel nice compared to yes. 98 mm -hmm. or close nice. to. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Mike. 553 on your Thursday. Let's go ahead and take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3, 9, 2, 2, Fireball 9, and your Deli 4, 6, 6, 6, 2. Fireball 9. Cash 5 numbers 3, 5, 19, 24, 30. Lotto, Texas 2, 5, 14, 19, 29, 43. And Powerball 27, 35, 39, 51, 66. Powerball of 16. The power play was 5. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the highly contagious U.S. variant is now the new dominant COVID strain, and it's spreading across the U.S. This morning, there are growing fears that it could be fueling another surge, and that's as five hard-hit states, including Florida, account for almost half the new cases in this country. More Americans, too, are taken to the skies after they got their vaccinations, so there are some new warnings about online travel scams, what you need to look for before you book. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA.
Good morning. Right now on KSAT.com, we want to hear your questions about the criminal justice system here in Bear County and South Texas. That's right, Erica. We're talking courts because there are a lot of high profile cases coming up this year, which you're going to be covering extensively for on air and for digital purposes. And we just want to know what questions you might have, maybe kind of clear up anything, uh, any sort of misunderstandings you might have about how this all works out. Because I get the, there's a lot of things it's, that go into it. Yeah, there's a lot of things that go into it. It's a lot to navigate navigate through and we want to hear your questions. So if you go to this article at the very bottom, there's a prompt. You could send them in and we'll try our best to answer them. That's right now on KSAT.com. The origins of politics in Texas dates back further than you think. Just ahead on GMSA, we explore the origins of the first civil government in Texas started right here in San Antonio. But outside with Transguide, if you have to hit the road, you definitely need those headlights on this morning, even or after the sun comes up. We've got fog in the area. The Weather Service just updated the dense fog advisory, and Mike has the latest next. We're starting with uh, late breaking news here on GMSA. Firefighters are currently on the scene of a house fire down in Lytle in Southwest Bear County. It broke out in the 15,400 block of Old Rio City Road. Our Stephen Cavazos joins us live from the scene. Good morning, Stephen. Mark Stephanie, that fire appears to be out right now, but the scene is far from over. We spotted crews from Bear County, fire crews that is from Bear County and Lytle. We're still working to get some information right now, but a crew member did tell me that they are actually working to put out some hot spots right behind me. And if you can take a look, it looks like this is on some uh, property and we're a ways back right now. But what we want to do is zoom in as much as we can to show you what's happening out there and what we've actually spotted. Uh, so we do see fire crews that are currently standing on what looks like some rubble. Uh, and not too far from that, we've also spotted a trailer that's nearby as crews remain on that property. Again, possibly putting out some hot spots this morning. We've also spotted a barn that's not too far from that location. And although we're still not sure if anyone lived on the property, we do know that there are several fire units out here and they've been out here for a little while at this point. We do know that a fire marshal is expected to be out here on the scene and we are working to get that information and hope to bring that to you in the next few minutes. But again, uh, we still have a very active scene out here in Lytle. And of course, stay with KSAT as we bring you the latest on this breaking story. Mark Stephanie, back to you. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Live in Lytle. And taking a look outside at live cam here in San Antonio, you, you can see pretty foggy out there. So if you're headed out, of course, be careful. And good morning to you, everybody. It is Thursday. It is April 8th. Mike is here with an update on a dense fog advisory that was recently expanded. Yes, and uh, basically what's going on right now is the opposite of what happened yesterday. We had that dry line move through, got rid of all the humidity. It was really comfortable earlier this morning, and now it has made a reverse course and moved back on through the area, brought the humidity back on in here, and that's why we are seeing that fog out there. And yeah, most of the area is covered with a dense fog advisory uh, along the coastal plain. This is out of the Corpus Christi Weather Service office. That's in effect up until nine o'clock, <clears throat> excuse me, elsewhere, including San Antonio, all the way up 35, going out 10, and then down 35 and out toward the uh, hill country. That's in effect up until 10 o'clock. Visibility uh, in some places, can't see your hand in front of your face pretty much. Port SA at two thirds of a mile, half mile Stinson, still at two miles at the airport, but Bernie Stage has started to drop down a little bit, as has Hondo, so that thicker fog will continue to work its way westward throughout the course of the next couple of hours. and. Given the fact that the advisory is in effect until 10 o'clock, we got about another four more hours at least of this. Plus, there's a lot of mist on the roads with this fog and a lot of very thick uh, fog. Most of the area, except way out in western parts of the hill country, has a uh, little bit of fog showing up. Oak is sky high call it 19,000 yesterday's reading. The updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour and a half or so. And uh, throughout the rest of today, temperatures uh, may fluctuate a degree or two, but they're not really going to be moving all that much, and that's going to be the situation through the rest of the morning. Then we'll have the dry line move back on through here. We're going to make it up to 78 degrees, and it won't get, I don't think, as quite as dry as what it was yesterday, but it'll still dry off a little bit, and that's going to help allow temperatures to get up to a 93, so another hot, hot day, about 15 degrees above normal. It's going to be even hotter tomorrow. Then we get somewhat of a break over the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. All right, fog mist. Any big deal going on out there? Uh, not 
too many issues, though. We do have some issues here and there. Mike, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone uh, out there. Looking at I-35 and New Braunfels Avenue on the east side, uh, there is a disabled vehicle there in the fog. So let's take a closer uh, look at that over here uh, at the wall this morning. You can see uh, emergency lights uh, flashing there. And as they've zoomed in a little bit, you can definitely see the fog and, and drivers. Uh, do, for the most part, look like they're being careful out there, which is what you should do. Slow down, allow plenty of uh, space between uh, the vehicles around you and uh, use the low beams uh, this morning. Here's just a look at uh, what's going on across the area when it comes uh, to the fog. That area, one of the places where we're seeing foggy driving conditions. Also to the north and east, Converse and up in New Braunfels and Seguin. That uh, crash you see there, this is on Pleasanton Road. We'll take a closer look at that coming up. Uh, seven. Uh, minutes between uh, Palo Alto and I-37 on 410 in each direction. So that looks fairly good on the south side. Some other travel times this morning, still 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels and 35, 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin. And we'll have another look at things coming up, guys. Thank you, Sam. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a drive by on the east side that left one person critically hurt. Happened in the 4300 block of Spring Oak around 1130 last night. That's near 10 and WW White. Police say a teen was inside the home when someone in a blue vehicle drove up and fired several shots into the house, then drove off. One of the bullets hit the teen in the head. He was rushed to Bamsey in critical condition. Police say this is the second time this house has been targeted in the past week. Investigators are also trying to figure out what led up to a suspicious death on the west side. Officers say they received a call for shots fired around 930 last night in the 2000 block of Texas Avenue near Bandera and Culebra. Two hours later, police say they got another call for a suspicious person and found one man dead in an alley. Investigators are still trying to determine what led up to that death. A man's in the hospital this morning after police say he was shot in his apartment complex parking lot. This happened just before 10 last night at the gates of Capernaum Apartments on Waters Edge. That's near 410 and Marbach. Police say the shooter drove off and the victim was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. That investigation continues. San Antonio police say 22 year old Charles Cruz Jr. is now facing charges for breaking in and stealing things from a northeast side apartment. That's according to an arrest affidavit. It says Cruz kicked in a door and stole two TVs and some jewelry. The tenant called police and they were able to lift Cruz's fingerprints from that crime scene. Police say they were able to match the fingerprints to Cruz in their system and they arrested him. Right now, 606, Governor Greg Abbott is calling for an investigation into alleged sexual abuse claims and lack of staff at Freeman Coliseum. The governor has asked the Texas Rangers and the Texas Department of Public Safety to investigate, and he expects he might have answers as early as today. Meanwhile, he's calling on the Biden administration to move those 1,600 kids to another facility. This facility should shut down immediately. The children should be moved to better staffed and better secured locations. And Texas Department of Public Safety and Texas Rangers must immediately investigate allegations of child sex abuse. And while the allegations are troubling, some are leery of the fact that they are being made amid the heated political debate of immigration. Bear County Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores called into question the timing of the governor's announcement. It was a very pleasant tour. He asked a lot of questions, and I'm glad that he got to see that the conditions are good conditions for the children. I only wish he had toured before his earlier press conference before he um, talks about accusations that are not yet founded or investigated. A White House regional spokesperson released a statement saying the claims will be investigated by the Department of Health and Human Services, but there is currently no plan to close Freeman Coliseum as an intake site right now. Overnight, Mark Weber, a spokesman for Health and Human Services, released a statement to KSET that reads in part, the Office of Refugee Settlement Resettlement has a zero tolerance policy for all forms of sexual abuse, sexual harassment, and inappropriate sexual behavior, and acts quickly to address any alleged violations of policy, including initiating employing disciplinary action, termination, or reporting to law enforcement agencies, end quote. However, Weber said the department will not comment on specific cases at this time.
To the pandemic now, local health officials reporting 290 new cases of coronavirus here in Bear County. They report eight more people have died. There's another slight increase in our hospitalizations. 195 people are getting medical treatment as of this morning. 84 are in ICU and 28 are on ventilators. The CDC says a highly contagious and possibly more deadly UK variant is now the most widespread source of new COVID infections in the US. The rise in cases of the variant comes as vaccination efforts try to keep up with the infections. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest. Good morning. The CDC is warning about the spread of this UK variant, which is believed to be at least 50% more contagious than previous strains of the virus and likely more deadly. New concerns this morning about that highly contagious UK variant, which the CDC now says is the most dominant strain of COVID in the US. Health experts fear it's helping fuel a fourth surge of the virus. And loosening restrictions, more people traveling, young people spreading it, and you have a more contagious variant, that is a setup for more outbreaks. COVID hospitalizations are on the rise in at least 16 states. In Michigan, cases nearly tripling in the last three weeks. Nearly half of the nation's new COVID cases are in just five states. Many of the patients, younger people who have yet to be vaccinated. Health experts say vaccines are still effective against the variant. 38 states have now opened vaccine eligibility to anyone over age 16. The director of the CDC telling ABC's Dr. Jen Ashton she's hopeful kids will be back in school this fall. We should anticipate come September 2021 that schools should be full fledged in person and all of our children back in the classroom. A new survey from the Department of Education found 46% of public school students are being offered full time in person learning, but the vast majority are still at home doing virtual schooling for at least part of the week. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. City of San Antonio will open cooling centers today and tomorrow as temperatures climb in our region. We have a full list of locations right now on KSAT.com. All cooling centers will take precautions because of the pandemic. That means masks are required. There'll be temperature screenings and social distancing in place. There are also a couple of blood drives going on today. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center holding one at the Whitty Museum from 10 this morning to 3 in the afternoon. There is also one at Morgan's Wonderland from noon to 5. You can make an appointment by calling that number on your screen or going to SouthTexasBlood.org. There is currently a critical blood shortage in South Texas. Right now it's 11 minutes past the hour. We're in the mid 60s. San Antonio has deep roots in today's Tejano Moments feature. We will learn how city council started here in the Alamo City. Outside with live cam and a friendly reminder, once the sun comes up, you still need those headlights on because visibility is poor across the San Antonio metropolitan area this morning. We'll talk more about the fog and how it affects the roads with Mike and Samuel coming up. And welcome back. Time now is 615. Did you know the first civil government or city council in Texas was started right here in San Antonio? In today's Tejano Moments feature, our Erica Nendez tells us who created it and how it helped shape Texas politics. In 1731, families from the Canary Islands began to arrive into San Antonio. By 1733, they, along with the soldier settlers already living in the area, created the first city council. The Canary Islanders first take uh, their position as Hidalgos, of course, but as the first mayor of San Antonio, the first Ricadores, the first city councilman, and, and justices, and so forth. Not only did this city council govern the residents in San Antonio, but also the outlying ranches. And as the city council evolves, they started establishing laws, developing infrastructure, applying taxes, and hiring law enforcement to patrol the town. It gave structure. It gave us law and order. It gave us some social continuity, uh, respect for government, uh, the fundamental things that we celebrate today. These first Tejano City Councils will continue until 1842. The last mayor would be Colonel Juan Seguin, and it wouldn't be until 1981 that San Antonio had another Tejano mayor, which was Henry Cisneros. For more on Tejano history, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 
It's 616 and time to check traffic and weather. Real quick, though, happy birthday to our Steve Spreester today. Aw, happy oh, birthday, Steve. Birthday. Happy yeah. birthday, Steve. That's a good deal. Sorry we were starting your day with fog and mm -hmm. <laughs> some tricky driving conditions there, Steve. But uh, this is I-35 in New Braunfels. You mentioned uh, earlier this morning we had a, a disabled vehicle there that we could actually make out in the fog because there's an emergency vehicle. Uh, there as well, but that has cleared uh, this morning, so that's uh, pretty good. But looking at the rest of the area, still some foggy driving conditions in the heart of San Antonio, up 35 to New Braunfels, out on I-10 to Seguin. And we still, there it goes. Uh, we had a crash at Pleasanton Road and Hawthorne Street on the south side, uh, close to I-35, but as you saw there, it popped off the screen. So. That crash has now cleared, so that's good news. Uh, looking at 35, once you get inside Loop 410, 10 minutes uh, each direction between downtown and uh, 410 on the northeast side. And then once you leave downtown, or if you're coming into downtown from the southwest side, 10 minutes each direction as well. So fairly good uh, travel times this morning. Not too many issues, but the big issue, of course, is the fog this morning. So uh, we're asking drivers out there to be careful this morning. Yeah, it is a big issue out there. Thank you, Samuel. Yeah. Mike Ostrade, just here. Yes, sir, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, it's going to be sticking around for a while. I, def I defer to you. Okay, uh, yeah, when you're hitting the roads this morning and I've uh, been talking about using headlights, low beams. You don't want to use high beams in fog. And temperatures are very mild now. It depends on where you are. Out in the hill country, way out in the hill country, you have chilly conditions. Grab a jacket out there, but not for the rest of us. Fog and some mist and temperatures are going to be staying pretty steady where they are right now. And then we're going to hit a high today up to 93. Yesterday. Yesterday was 94, so just about the same, roughly 15 degrees above normal. Somewhat lower humidity. We got that southwesterly wind coming on in here, and that should pull down some of that uh, drier air in here. So the dry line, which moved through the area yesterday, and that dropped temperatures down, is then going to do an about face as it is doing right now, and then it's going to come back down through the area. So it should get rid of some of the uh, humidity by later on this afternoon. I don't know. If quite as much humidity. It's going to be getting out of here, but it'll be more comfortable this afternoon than what it is right now. All right, visibility has dropped to a quarter mile out there at the airport, two thirds at Port SA at three quarters in New Braunfels and almost up to two miles out at Randolph. It's dropping down somewhat Bernie stage as well as in Hondo. Uvalde, you're now seeing some fog. Catula, Laredo, all the way down I-35 and of course off here to the east and the dense fog advisory for almost all of the area with the exception of far western and northwestern portions of the hill country and well down to the uh, southeast but just because you don't have a dense fog advisory doesn't mean you'd have to watch out for it but uh, that's again in effect up until 10 o'clock so it is going to be a long slow going morning humidity is going to like i said drop down somewhat this afternoon then it's going to come right back up tomorrow morning. Then it'll drop down throughout the day tomorrow and be fairly comfortable. It looks like over the weekend it's going to come back up. Nice thing, though, when humidity comes back in here by the middle part or excuse me, the first part of next week, we do start to then have a couple of rain chances. It's not written in stone, but at least there is that chance for a little bit of rain going in toward uh, next week. So here's what the computer models look like throughout today. We've got clouds, fog this morning, clear skies tonight, and then tomorrow we do it all over again. We're going to have probably fog in the morning once again with all that humidity pumping back on in here some mist which we're seeing right now as well and then we'll start to clear out somewhat in the afternoon one thing to take note of at least from this vantage point uh, there's nothing showing up with this computer model some are not really in agreement with this but nothing as far as any rain there is a chance though for a couple of showers or a couple of thunderstorms, especially off to the east and to the northeast, and that would be tomorrow afternoon. And then Storm Prediction Center, this is out of our viewing area, but has the marginal, even up to enhanced chance for severe storms well up to the northeast of us. So the atmosphere is going to be really unstable tomorrow, but there's real tight lid on things. However, if you kind of poke a hole in that lid, anything that does form up could become severe quite easily as far as storms are concerned. But again, the majority of that's going to be well off to the uh, northeast of us. 78 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. We'll be dealing with all that fog all morning long and 
partly cloudy in some places may be pushing things and the clouds may be stubborn going in toward noon and then we'll see some more sunshine later on today. The dry line will try and come back on through here and that'll drop humidity down somewhat. I don't think as much as yesterday, but still enough to allow temperatures to really heat up to 93 degrees well above normal. And then tomorrow going for 97. The record tomorrow is 98. So we're definitely going to be knocking on the door of that. That small chance for a couple of showers or a thunderstorm well off to the east. Breezy on Saturday. Temperatures will be about 10 degrees lower over the weekend, which is going to be really pleasant. Still way above normal take anything we can get and then back down to the low 80s and even upper 70s by the middle of next week with that chance of rain. Yeah, above normal on the weekend, but yeah, like you said, that'll be better to have the 80s. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mike. 622 on your Thursday morning. And our San Antonio Spurs are struggling after another loss. This time in Denver, we're going to hear what Coach Pop says needs to be better. We do it every night. Like clockwork. Do it. Run your dishwasher with Cascade Platinum and save water. Did you know certified dishwashers use less than four gallons per cycle while a running sink uses that every two minutes? So do it with Cascade, the surprising way to save water. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Great tasting and sure. With nine grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients to support immune health. What happens when you give 2 million at-risk seniors free COVID-19 vaccines? Everything changes. America's Health Insurance Plans, bringing health insurance providers together to help those most in need. Because care changes everything. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA-approved over-the-counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. Our poor San Antonio Spurs continue to struggle in the second half of the season. Although they played the Mile High City last night, their energy looked a little low. Denver was able to outpace the Spurs in the second half as some of the players started to drag. At one point, the Nuggets built a 20-point lead in the second half, carried them to a 106-96 win over the Silver and Black. DeJounte Murray and Derek White each scored 18 points. Uh, but Coach Pop said the players off the bench are actually continually being outplayed and need to up their game. Spurs get a second chance tomorrow, though. It's the second game of back-to-backs in Denver. And check this out. The Hubble telescope has captured a rare cosmic spectacle. Two pairs of intense beacons of light called quasars in separate galaxies that are merging. Super massive black holes are powering the quasars and within a few million years, they'll smash into each other, creating a single, even larger black hole. Well, right now, it looks like a seagull or something yeah. like that in outer space. It's still pretty. <laughs> Mind boggling what the yes. Hubble has been able to catch That's over true. the years. 626 on your Thursday. And summer vacation is almost here and many people are planning on traveling. We're going to see how that can impact San Antonio in our next half hour. Multiple fire crews on the scene of a structure fire here in Lytle. I'm Stephen Cavazos and coming up this morning on GMSA, what we're learning about this investigation. Dense fog advisory. There's a live look right now out by the airport off of Loop 410. Mike Ostrage is standing by with that and how this could be affecting your morning commute with Samuel King in just a moment. Good morning. It is Thursday, April 8th. Thank you for joining us this morning. And yeah, be careful out there. It's very foggy. It wasn't like this just a matter of hours ago, but it moved in fast. And now Mike says it's probably going to stick around a while. At least through mid morning. And on top of the fog is the fact that there's a lot of mist being reported. So the roads are definitely damp. Keep your headlights on low beams and you know, it'll stick around through it. We may have some stubborn fog and stubborn clouds at least through about noon around here. Uh, this view is well, it's about the same as what it has been for the past couple of hours. Temperatures at 65 degrees, uh, dew points at 64. Just to kind of think back to yesterday, this number got down to right around the mid upper 30s when that dry line moved through. Now it moved down to the southeast. Now it's coming back up and moving back in toward the hill country, which is why the humidity and therefore we got the fog around here has uh, really gone up and uh, no wind really to speak of. Dense fog advisory for almost all of the area up until 10 o'clock this morning down here along the coastal 
Coastal Plain. These counties from uh, Live Oak over toward B Victoria. It's in effect up until 9 o'clock. Visibility at the airport has dropped down to just a quarter of a mile right now. A Stinson half mile. A little bit around Hondo, Bernie State has really dropped down to just two and a half miles, so watch it up around Kerrville even. Some of that fog may continue to work its way out in toward the hill country, and it's definitely working its way down to the uh, southwest as well. So, like I said, fog as well as mist on the roads, and Oak is extremely high. It is just about 19,000 updated counts going to be coming out in about an hour or so. Humidity returns or has returned uh, depending on where you live right now, and that's really dependent on temperatures too. I mean, we're down in the 40s right now in parts of the hill country, believe it or not, so grab a jacket there, but you don't need one in town. Fog and mist this morning, and then uh, the humidity will drop down somewhat this afternoon. It's going to be hot again up into the low 90s mid and even upper 90s uh, off to the west and southwest. Tomorrow it's going to be even hotter. We're looking at mid to upper 90s here in town. A stray shower or storm is possible well off to the east tomorrow afternoon, although not very likely at all. And then temperatures will be down to the mid 80s, still above normal, above average, but at least it's going to be more comfortable. We've got a chance for some rain coming in here next week. That is still, you know, kind of iffy, but one thing for sure, yeah, take it easy on the road. Speaking of which, Traffic Authority and Samuel King, what's the latest, sir? Well, Mike, this is uh, 35 at Space Center, one of the areas where we are seeing uh, some fog uh, being reported uh, this morning. And so you see drivers there, traffic at this location flowing fairly uh, smoothly here. But just, just something to watch out for. We're not seeing fog everywhere in the area at this moment, uh, particularly if you get out to the west on areas like 410. But you really uh, thick in areas like the east side, so something to watch out for. Also, this uh, popped up here. This is a 35 northbound at the Vision. Bit of a slowdown there. We have a uh, the stalled vehicle there. It's blocking a, a shoulder in the left lane there, so that might be accounting uh, for that slowdown. We'll take another close look at that coming up in our next update. Here is some of the travel times across uh, the area. They still look fairly normal, so that is a good thing this morning. 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels on 35. 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. 18 minutes on 35 from Lytle. 29 minutes on I-10 coming in from Seguin. We'll have another update coming up shortly, guys. Thank you, Samuel. When we get back to late breaking news, we've been following this morning here on GMSA. Crews working a fire seen down in Lytle. That's in southwest Bear County. This is happening on old Frio City Road in Lytle. Our Stephen Cavazos is there live. Now, Stephen, have any injuries been reported? Mark Stephanie, we're still working on gathering those details, so it's still not clear if there was anyone that was actually hurt as a result of this fire. However, we did speak with some crew members off camera. Now, what they were able to tell me was not a lot of information other than that this investigation is still very much in its early stages. And if you can see right behind me, we still have that investigation that is ongoing. And the, that fire does appear to be out, but we've spotted crews from Bear County and Lytle that are here on the scene. And we are some ways back, but we're zooming in as much as we possibly possibly can right now and our photographer Asian is going to show you what we've been able to see out here as it's developing. Now fire crews have been standing on some rubble uh, close in that vicinity and know it's a little bit dark and hazy out there to see right now but we have spotted fire crews that have been out there what looks like they were overhauling possibly hot spots this morning. Uh, they've also spotted some trailers that were nearby on this property as well as a farmhouse but you can see that we still have fire crews that are out there on that property and again those crew members did tell me that this investigation is still in the early stages, so it's likely that they will be out here for some time. We know that the fire marshal is here on the scene right now. We are still working to get that information, so we can't confirm if there are any injuries right now. But if you stay with KSAT, we will continue to bring you the latest on this breaking story here in Lytle this morning. But for now, reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Stephen. Just into our newsroom, we have learned an arrest has been made after a cyclist was hit and killed near downtown. Police say 24-year-old Samantha Castillo has been arrested and is facing charges of intoxication manslaughter. The crash happened last night around 7. Police tell us a woman was riding ahead of the group of cyclists and pulled over to rest in front of Central Catholic High School. That's when police say Castillo's car jumped the curb hit and killed the cyclist. 
Tonight, KSAT, the San Antonio Report, and Bear Facts are teaming up to hold the debate on Proposition B in the upcoming election. Our Steve Spreester will moderate as we hear from both sides of the issue of the San Antonio Police Department's collective bargaining rights. The San Antonio Police Officers Union, FIX, SAPD, and the City Attorney will all be there. We'll live stream it on KSAT.com and the KSAP TV app set to start tonight at 7 o'clock. A community conversation surrounding San Antonio's police department will take place tonight. City officials say the input gathered will be used in the development of recommendations to the Public Safety Committee and the City Council. Residents in District 2 will have a chance to weigh in. It will take place online at 6 this evening. It's all part of our coverage going into election season. And to tell us more about our Vote 2021 page, here is RJ Marcus and Erica Hernandez. Good morning, everybody. This morning on KSAT.com, we wanted to tell you about our Vote 2021 section, which is online right now and has anything and everything you need to know about the upcoming election. Yeah, and that election is on May 1st. And while voter registration has already ended, we still have a look at the ballot, who's running the propositions, what some of the latest polls are showing. We kind of have you all covered right here on this page right now, RJ. Yeah, and I think the big thing to know is that we obviously have the mayor's race and all city council races are up uh, for re for elections here. And so this will be an interesting election coming up. Uh, again, you can find all this information on the website KSAT.com. 637, the Derek Chauvin murder trial enters its ninth day of witness testimony for the prosecution as they seek to convict the former Minneapolis police officer in the death of George Floyd. Both sides focusing now on pinpointing the exact cause of Floyd's death. CNN's Daryl Forges has the latest. 30 witnesses have testified so far in the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, including several members of law enforcement. I'm currently a senior special agent with the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. On Wednesday, a significant moment in the court as the defense pressed the senior special agent who led the investigation into George Floyd's death. He was shown a clip of police body cam video of Floyd saying something as Chauvin kneeled on him. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. Did it appear that Mr. Floyd said, I ate too many drugs? Yes, it did. But when the prosecution played a longer clip of that video, Special Agent James Ryerson clarified what he heard. Are you able to tell uh, what Mr. Floyd is saying there? Yes, I believe Mr. Floyd was saying, I ain't do no drugs. The testimony coming as both sides focus on the exact cause of Floyd's death. The prosecution laying the blame squarely on Chauvin's use of force. And the pressure that was being caused by the body weight uh, would, uh, could cause positional asphyxia, which could cause death. The defense arguing Floyd's health and drug use were responsible. An attorney for Floyd's family says the defense's argument is just a distraction. It's an argument. It doesn't take away from the fact that the use of force here was excessive and it turned out to be deadly. In Minneapolis, I'm Daryl Forges. Right now, it's just about 640. We are in the mid-60s. Many Americans are looking to the summer to catch up on some long-awaited vacations. After the break, we're going to see how it could impact San Antonio businesses. It's exactly 643. Welcome back and good morning. Just a few weeks into spring and a lot of people already seem to have their eyes on summer. They're anxious not to have a repeat of last year when the pandemic put a curve in their travel plans. As Katrina Weber reports, the vaccine has given some people a shot of confidence. Just like these planes, summer plans are no longer up in the air. Some people are ready to go. I plan to take some time off. Um, I've already been vaccinated, so. Hopefully I can get some travel in this summer. We were planning to do it last year, but we couldn't do it. So we're, we might go this year. Being cooped up by the coronavirus has taken its toll on folks. Vaccines are just the booster some have needed to feel good about traveling again. We want to go to the beach, go to Corpus. We heard it's fun there, so we're looking forward to that. Probably in the Caribbean um, or maybe, I, I don't know, um, maybe, maybe somewhere in Asia. It just feels like the floodgates open. People saying, I want to, I want to go somewhere. Alice Petrie's phones have been ringing off the hook lately at her Northwest side travel agency. She says while vaccinations have increased interest in vacations, all destinations may not be ready. The Mexico beaches, but there's a lot to see in the United States also. Crew 
cruise ships from any U.S. port, she says, are not an option yet. And there are no guarantees when it comes to flying into other countries. As for flying out of San Antonio, the airport has yet to crunch the numbers for summer expectations. AAA, which keeps track of road travel trends, doesn't have any hard figures for the summer just yet either. But the early signs are pointing to people being on the move in mass out here as well. The travel bug seems to be very much alive and it goes both ways. We're really waiting to get out our calculators and to look at what happened at spring break because just the eye test told us it was outstanding. Richard Oliver with Visit San Antonio says based on recent business at local attractions, he expects summer tourism to take flight too, with most visitors coming from within Texas. Anything is going to be such a bonus from what we had to deal with in 2020, uh, and it's good, but we feel very good about what's going on. He's hopeful the season will be a good shot in the arm, for the local economy. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And we hope so too. Right now, 645. Still foggy out there. I was just looking at a trans guy camera <coughs> a problem at Loop 410 in Bandera. That's right, Stephanie and Mark. There's a new crash uh, just reported here in the eastbound lanes. You can uh, see there and you can see the emergency vehicles there as well. So let's take a closer look at this. Uh, eastbound lanes, as I mentioned, look like at least the right lane there is closed. So traffic uh, in the eastbound lanes there. You see the emergency vehicles. You also see uh, some heavy traffic now on the frontage roads as well. Here's how that looks on the map. That is again Loop 410 eastbound at Bandera Road. This just coming in, so we don't even have the icon there yet, but you can definitely see the slowdown uh, down to nine miles per hour. So a travel time building already here between a 151 and I-10, 13 minutes between 151 and I-10 this morning. Also, we mentioned this stalled vehicle northbound on I-35 causing some delays 24 miles per hour at Division Avenue. So uh, something to watch out for too if you commute in that area. But one more quick look here. This is uh, 410 at Bandera Road. I uh, see at least a part of that right lane closed there following a crash this morning. We'll keep an eye on it, guys. Thank you, Samuel. And Mike's been telling us we're, we're going to stay socked in for a while, right, Mike? Yeah, at least uh, it's a quarter of seven right now for at least the, the next couple of hours. And some of the, the low clouds and even, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the fog, you know, it could linger in places up till late morning and, and close to noontime. So this is picture really hasn't changed that much out there looking off to the east. One thing to watch out for and you can see the little bit of sheen on the road. Not only is there fog, but a lot of mist is being reported around the area. So, you know, with the we haven't had a lot of rain, there's a lot of dust, you know, pollen on the road and everything. So it just makes it nice and slippery out there when you get that little bit of moisture. Bernie stage has dropped to a mile and three quarters visibility. Hondo has dropped to six, still a quarter mile out at the airport and it has improved slightly around Pleasanton, but quarter mile up the road in New Braunfels as well. Catula is getting thicker fog there, uh, but from Carrizo Springs all the way up and toward Kerrville, nothing is showing up as far as fog as of yet. Just be kind of on the lookout for it. Uh, we do have dense fog advisory. It extends westward as far as Uvalde and not including Kerr County, but it does include Bandera County. But of course, you got to watch it going into parts of the uh, hill country and then obviously down to the southeast as well because the fog advisory goes down into the uh, right along the coast. All right, yesterday in the afternoon, we were talking about how the dry line was going to be moving on through and timing wise, it came through about on schedule with a lot of computer models indicated. And you can see this because the dew point temperatures were staying in the mid 60s, what they are right now. And then all of a sudden dropped down to 39 degrees. Temperatures shot up six degrees and very, very quickly between three and four o'clock. And, you know, we always talk about humidity and a dry heat's more comfortable and all. Well, the heat index was 89 when the temperature was 88. So it felt above it, not anything too outrageous, but with that dry air, your body was actually able to cool itself much more efficiently. So it only felt like 90 when the air temperature was actually 94. I always use the example in a situation like that late afternoon, if you were in a pool and hopped out, you'd actually be kind of chilly because the water would evaporate so efficiently off your body and your body would cool itself so efficiently. So that was yesterday afternoon. And then just the opposite happened this morning. All that dry line worked its way back on through here. We still have very low uh, dew point temperatures out in portions of the hill country, but it has gone up. We've actually gone up about 20 degrees with the uh, dew point temperature since earlier this morning. So a lot more humidity moved on in here, and that will continue to cover the area later on this morning and throughout a good portion of the afternoon. Then it will drop down. It doesn't look like it's going to drop down as dramatically this afternoon, the humidity, but it will dry out somewhat, and so it will be a comfortable 
93 degrees this afternoon. Won't have oppressively high humidity, but notice how the humidity is really going to come back in here overnight then and throughout a good chunk of the day tomorrow. And then we do it all over again, but we get more of a significant drop in the humidity with that dry line working its way on through here. And as it moves on through tomorrow afternoon, there is the chance that it's going to produce a couple of showers and thunderstorms well off to the east, maybe grazing into our eastern counties. Very small chance here. Some of those now notice how Storm Prediction Center has that risk for severe weather well up to the northeast of us. So the atmosphere is very, very unstable tomorrow and very volatile. That's what to describe. It, but the tight lid on it. However, you get one or two of those thunderstorms to pop up. If they do happen to pop up, it's going to turn strong to severe very easily tomorrow afternoon. But again, that's primarily well up to the northeast of us. Uh, 78 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature once again, well above normal by 15 degrees, getting up to 93 today, a little bit lower humidity. And then tomorrow humidity back in tomorrow morning. By the afternoon, it will drop down. We have that slight chance for rain off to the east. 97 tomorrow. The record tomorrow is 98. It's going to be a real close call. Back down to the mid 80s over the weekend and then back down to the low 80s and upper 70s by the middle of next week. What do you think? We might tie, perhaps? For the record. Well, it, it'll really depend on how soon the dry line moves on through here tomorrow mm -hmm. afternoon, because when that dries out, as you saw yesterday, you know, temperature shot up like six degrees. So dry air comes in. If it comes in sooner and we get a long period of heating in the afternoon, mm -hmm. much more likely to happen. I think that's a yes. Yeah, we, we, we might could break the record, but at least we'll get yeah. some relief in the weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. thank you, Mike. 651 on your Thursday morning. And an apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to look into the truth about this old expression and how eating apples can greatly affect your overall health. Back outside with live cam. And again, we're tracking this dense fog as the sun is just beginning to come up. Don't forget, uh, today we are celebrating the birthday of KSAT's very own Steve Spreester. Happy birthday, Steve. I'm Stephen Cavazos. We are live on the scene in the 15,400 block of Old Frio City Road here in Lida, where multiple fire crews have remained on the scene following a structure fire here in this area. We spotted several fire crews from Bear County and Lytle that have remained on the scene. We first want to show you what we spotted out here. We know that crews have been overhauling hot spots in the area and what looks like a private property. Now, it's not clear if anyone actually lived on that property or, or if there are any injuries. Fire marshals are on the scene at this time, and we also have a public information officer that is expected to give us information. So stay with KSAT as we continue to bring you the very latest. But for now, reporting live in Lytle, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMS 89, after canceling last year due to the pandemic, the Poteet Strawberry Festival will kick things off tomorrow. How farmers hope the sales from the festival will make up for last year's losses. That's at 9 after Good Morning America. Let's go straight to Samuel in the traffic lab. Mark Stephanie, we still have a crash here. This is 410 eastbound at Bandera Road. You can see the right lane there is closed. You see the traffic is slow. You see the situation there and heavy traffic on the frontage roads. Again, this is how that looks at the map. You're down to nine miles per hour approaching uh, that interchange. You'll find an alternate route, Mike. And still got a lot of thick fog and it's going to stick around. This is what it looks like over there by the airport right now. Quarter mile visibility. Port say only at three quarters. Uh, a lot of mist being reported as well. And it covers a good chunk of our viewing area, as does the dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning. Then we'll see more sunshine later on today. A little bit drier air, so that'll help temperatures to get up to 93 today. All right, everybody, go out there and make it a great day. Yes, but be, be careful on the roadways. A lot of fog out there. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here at 9. Oh, 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 oh,